Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we're gonna do a new AR-10 buyers video. Okay, so I've already done a lot of AR-10 buyers videos. Uh, one of the things I've said is don't consider buying an AR-10 until you already own several AR-15s, okay? Everything about an AR-10 is a lot more expensive. Uh, so basically do as much shooting as you can, become proficient with AR rifles on the cheaper uh, AR-15s also on AR-9s, okay? But once you've got like several AR-15s, several AR-9s, several Glocks, uh, yeah, getting an AR-10 is a lot of fun, okay? Um, so uh, if you're shopping around for a new AR-10, okay, uh, that basically shoots 308 or 762 by 51 and um, just so you guys know, the, the, the a, a gun that's chambered in 308 will shoot either caliber, okay? So you want your barrel to be in 308 um so the main thing that you need to be looking for when you're shopping for an ar-10 uh, is a highly adjustable gas system okay it has to be very adjustable and four positions or five positions is not enough okay and i'm going to show you guys why now first of all before we get into the why you gotta understand which i'm sure most of you do how the um you know how the how the gun works okay so uh with the AR style guns, they're gas operated. So when the bullet gets past a certain point, there's a hole in the barrel. The gas comes out the hole and it gets sent back through a tube to come back and cycle the bolt of the gun. Okay. And when it cycles the bolt, it ejects the empty case and the next round is stripped off the magazine, goes into the chamber. Okay. So in order for that to happen, you have to have enough gas coming back this tube to cycle the bolt. Okay. But if you have too much gas uh what happens is the gun is basically beating itself up uh the recoil is really really stiff so it prevents you from staying on target uh for your shots you have to work harder to get back on target uh but what it will also start to do is it'll start ripping the cases okay it may actually start tearing the cases in half uh ripping the rims off uh, you might start seeing primers getting blown out so that's a case of too much uh too much gas coming back into your system so there's a, a fine balance between you know too much gas or too little gas okay now the problem with 308 is that the amount of gas that they generate is all over the board okay um so with three, 308 calibers uh for the most part for the last several decades have primarily gone into bolt action guns okay so with a bolt action gun the gun doesn't rely on the recoil in order to operate the gun right so you're manually working it with the bolt okay so on the bolt action guns aside from the gun not being dependent on a recoil what's also happening is because there's no uh there's no recoil spring right because the recoil spring in this gun also acts as a shock absorber okay so that takes away from the felt recoil so bolt action shooters because basically all the recoil is going straight into their body uh, traditionally like have preferred lighter shooting 308s right or lighter recoiling 308s which doesn't make sense to me it's like uh, because what they did is they created a demand for less powerful 308 ammunition right it, it, it makes a lot more sense for me is for them to go to some different caliber okay uh, rather than put pressure on the manufacturers to create weaker 308s but that's what happened and that's where we are like your typical hunting ammunition the felt recoil on that is going to be less uh than your military you know style uh 762 by 51 okay um so so the 308 all over the board now how far all over the board uh, i have here a summary of three different ammunitions that i was testing so uh with uh freedom munitions 150 grain okay i got 20 2832 2832 feet per second okay which comes out to uh, an energy of 2671 uh foot pounds okay compared to the 150 grain tula okay uh and i'm just throwing this up there because this was among the weakest of the uh, of the energies that i was able to measure okay the 150 grain tula right also 150 grain bullet both of these are 150s this had a velocity of 2409 feet per second Right? So there's a velocity difference here of four, um, like 400 feet per second, or a little bit more than 400 feet per second, right? And then the energy generated by the Tula was 1933, okay? 
1,933. So the difference between this Freedom Munitions at 2671 energy and this Tula at 1933 is 738 foot pounds. That is a huge difference. Okay, 700, a difference of 738 foot pounds in the same caliber is basically like the difference of a 44 Magnum or, or like a 10 millimeter. Okay, so that's the difference that I saw between two different ammunitions. Now you might say, hey, it's just Tula, you know, maybe Tula's at the very low end and maybe free ammunition, maybe these are like unicorns. Well, I also looked at American Sniper, okay? American Sniper, 149 grains. Okay, that came out somewhere in the middle. So that had an energy of 20, uh, sorry, no, that had a, a velocity of 2671 feet per second, right? So it's somewhere in the middle between those two. And that had an energy of 2371, okay? 2,371 foot pounds. So the American Sniper was 300 foot pounds less than the Freedom Munitions, okay? But it was 438 foot pounds more than the Tula, okay? Uh, so even if you if you basically consider let's say American Sniper which is like in the middle versus Freedom Munitions and I don't even know if that's the top maybe they come in even hotter than that you know that, there's a difference of 300 foot pounds 300 foot pounds is like a nine millimeter okay that's the difference between the Tula and the Freedom Munitions a, a, a difference of nine millimeter and and the difference between the the American Sniper and the Tula. Right, is a difference of 438. That's kind of like a, a 10 millimeter, okay, or uh, not even, uh, let's say a 40 cal, okay. That's a 40 cal difference. Uh, so you're talking about gigantic differences, right, in 308, gi gigantic energy differences. So for that reason, you need a highly adjustable gas system, okay. So one of the one of the uh, uh, AR-10s that I've been following, looking at lots of reviews for, is the Ruger SFAR, okay? And I'm highly interested in the Ruger SFAR because, you know, this Palmetto AR-10, um, without, without the optics, this is a nine pound gun, right? So just the gun by itself is nine pounds. The Ruger SFAR comes in at about seven. So that's just a little bit heavier than your standard AR-15. However, the SFAR only has, like I think three, I think I think the original valve had three adjustable gas positions. I think the new one that they're putting out there had has four adjustable positions. That's not enough. Okay, that is not enough for these type of differences. And we're not even talking about putting suppressors on these things, right? Because when you put a suppressor on this, that changes the ball game even more. Okay, that, 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 that you know that uh, we're just we're looking at 308 without suppressors. So the Ruger S4 is extremely interesting to me. If what we need is a Gen 2 that has more adjustable gas positions, right? If, if, if Palmetto, because this Palmetto AR-10 has three slots per turn, per turn, so it's for a total of 17, okay? Uh, I think that Ruger should give us 20, okay? Um, now, this, and there's tons of videos out there with people having problems with their Ruger S4 cycle, okay? Now, uh, now the Ruger S4 is, because this is, I got this done, like this gun, uh, like um, usually goes for about eight hundred dollars. Around the holidays, you can get it for seven hundred dollars. That's what I paid for this seven hundred dollars uh, in December of twenty twenty three. The way you buy it is you buy the lower separate, have that shipped to your FFL. I got that for two hundred dollars, and then the upper gets you have that shipped to your house. This twenty inch barrel here. By the way, this is a twenty inch barrel uh, that all those tests were done on. This 20-inch barrel over here was $500 shipped to my house. So the whole gun was like $700, you know, plus a few dollars for shipping. So let's say $730 or something. Okay? Um, no, no, actually the shipping was free, uh, the taxes, okay? So it came out to something like $730. The shipping was free if you get it over the holidays. Um, so so the other one that I've been looking at, right, because the, because the Ruger S4 is expensive. It's somewhere like in the $1,200 range, $1,300 range. It's expensive. And the gas system is completely insufficient, okay? Uh, for, for these type of variances, okay? because these are the type of variances that you're gonna see, all right? And you might say that that tool is like a unicorn here, but it's so low, but hunting ammunition is gonna be in this ballpark here, maybe even lower, because like I explained earlier, for decades, hunters have been asking for weaker 308 ammunition instead of going to some other caliber, okay? Um, now the other one I've been looking at okay, and studying is the, the Bear Creek. Now Bear Creek does not have 
uh, an adjustable gas system. It does not have it. Okay. Um, now, and they, and I believe the Bear Creek comes in just a little bit cheaper than this Palmetto. Okay, I think I when I priced it out about the same time, uh, it was coming in somewhere in the in the mid 600s. Okay, now it it had a a cheapo stock. It didn't have the Mad Pole furniture on here. Uh, and I'm always going to upgrade to the stock, so that's something to consider. Consider the stock that comes with it. Uh, the also consider the grip. Now this one has a proprietary grip. I did try the Magpul grip. It did fit, but it left a gap here, so I ended up going back to it. And I did upgrade the trigger here to a two-stage trigger. If you're shooting distances, it makes a difference. You're going to want to upgrade to a two-stage trigger, which is somewhere I was able to get that for. I think it was a Schmidt one from Palmetto. It was like, um, what was it? It was like uh, about seventy-five dollars over the holidays. Uh, but as far as the Bear Creek one, okay, uh, in the videos that I saw, it seems to be like I didn't, I haven't seen any Bear Creek videos of their AR-10 where it's having cycling problems. So what that means is, in order for them to accomplish that, they the, the gas system is most likely at the higher end. They've got it like wide open so that it will be able to cycle, you know some of this you know the, the, some of the weaker ammunition out there so what that's what that means is that the gun is beating itself up or what it means is that the felt recoil uh is going to be a lot more um and the ar-10 right uh the way i see it this is like a dmr gun okay this is so that you can take multiple shots very quickly at distance okay uh so in order to be able to do that you don't want the gun throwing you back and throwing you off the target, okay? Uh, so you want to be able to control the recoil, and the best way to do it is through the adjustable gas system. So the Bear Creek one does not have an adjustable gas system. I think that they would do a lot better to add one, right, that has like 20 adjustable positions, um, because I think, you know, whatever the additional cost is, it it is going to be worth it. It is absolutely going to be worth it. If you get the Bear Creek one, the thing that you have to watch out for, right, because, or any AR-10 that does not have an adjustable gas system, is make sure your, your cases aren't being torn, the rims on the cases aren't being torn out, and the primers are not getting punched out, okay? Um, so, so you need, to, if you're shooting your AR-10, you have to look at, 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 the, at the cases. If I pick up your, your brass, look at it, uh, and make sure that it's not showing signs of overpressure. Uh, or it's not even it's not that the ammunition itself is over pressure because the, the way this works is when when the gun goes bang right bullet goes out the barrel the case itself swells up to the chamber okay so the the, the bolt uh, if it's too fast it's going to start moving back right it's going to start moving back and trying to eject that case before the case has a chance to swell down right because the, the case expands to the chamber and it takes a little time, right, you know, to, in order for it to shrink back down. If the bolt starts trying to pull it back before it shrinks down, you're going to end up ripping, ripping the, the, the rims off, uh, breaking your extractors, punching out your primers, you know, that kind of stuff. Uh, so, so, so that's why the timing has to be right, okay? Uh, you know, gas-operated guns, they're dependent on the right timing. Um, with AR-15s, right, we're usually able to adjust that timing uh, with the buffer weight, okay? We're able to put in a, a heavier buffer weight or, you know, if we need to slow it down a little bit or a, um, uh, a lighter one if we need to speed it up. And I have, I have seen situations where the gas port um, in one particular gun was basically too big that even when I was putting in there like five ounce buffer weights It was still ripping the case. Okay, but that's that's that was kind of an anomaly that was like okay in that one barrel They drilled out the the the, 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 the gas port too wide Okay, the variances that we typically see in five five six ammunition two two three is small enough, right? Uh, that it can be adjusted with the buffer weight. Okay, on the 308s, the variances are so wide that you cannot adjust it with just the buffer weight. Yeah, you need to be able to adjust it uh, from from. You need to be able to adjust the gas system itself. And actually, you can see. Let me show you guys. If you look in there, you'll see. There it is. There it goes. 
right? You see that? That's the, that's the adjust, adjustable uh, gas valve. So that's on this Palmetto, that's three slots per turn for a total of 17, okay? And they give you a key so that you can adjust it, okay? This is absolutely necessary for AR-10 because of the huge variances in this 308 ammunition. Now, um, with this Palmetto AR-10, uh, I'm in position number five out of 17, right? So the way I figured it out is uh, I, I, I used the key and I turned it clockwise all the way down to close it off completely, okay? So there's no gas coming into the, in, into the into, you know, coming into the bolt. So when I fired one shot, uh, it did not eject around because there's no there's no gas coming to it. I opened it one slot, okay? And I saw it. It it, it, uh, it did not eject there either, right? This gas because there wasn't just just wasn't enough gas there. So that's probably the position that you would need it that you would use if you had a suppressor on this. Put, and when I shoot Tula, which is underpowered, right, at the low end, right, uh, that's ejecting at four o'clock. Okay. When I shoot, right, the Tula is the one that gives us 1933 energy. So that ejects at four o'clock. And when I shoot the Freedom Munitions, which is at the very high end of what I've uh, I've tested, with an energy of 2671, that so Freedom Munitions ejects at like two o'clock, okay? Two, so let's say about uh, somewhere between two one and two o'clock. Let's say 130, okay? So Freedom uh, Tula is back here, Freedom Munitions is up there. That is a good place for me to be because that's now going to run all the ammunition that I use, okay? That one gas position, okay? So again, I'm just pointing out why you have to have a highly adjustable gas system. Now, I did also, you know, now when I tuned this gun, I tuned it with the original buffer weight and the original spring that came with the gun, okay? Uh, that's how I tuned it. Now, I did also, and I think it came something with like, I think it was a, uh, a 3.8 ounce buffer weight. I did upgrade it to the Quell Valley, Quell Valley 5.6 uh, ounce buffer weight. Okay, I did a, vid a separate video on that. Okay, so when I put the heavier buffer weight uh, in this gun, right, the 5.6, okay, and I shot the gun, it basically had zero effect on my ejection pattern. Okay, Tula was still at four o'clock. Uh, the free munitions was still like like at two o'clock. Okay, and the point I'm trying to make there is that the gas is the, the, the is, is so so much that. That slight change in the buffer weight was barely, I mean, I'm sure it's there, but it was barely noticeable, okay? Barely noticeable. Um, I, I, I could not tell a difference in the felt recoil with the slightly heavier buffer weight. I did put in the uh, orange sprinkle spring, okay? The orange sprinkle spring is really stiff. So when I did put the orange sprinkle stiff in there, again, I'm still ejecting Tula at 4 o'clock, and I'm still ejecting Freedom Munitions at about 1 o'clock. It, you know, again, because because the gas is really what's driving this gun. The, you cannot adjust it with the buffer weight, right? Significantly. Uh, now, when I was shooting it, though, I do feel less felt recoil, right? With the combination, uh, with the combination of the uh, heavier buffer weight and the stiffer orange sprinkle spring. When I shoot the gun, I see that it moves less off target, and I see that the recoil into my chest is, is, is a little bit less. Uh, so, so there's a benefit. There's definitely a benefit of having the lighter uh, recoil spring. Now, I did try going down from position 5 to position 4. The gun was working, uh, but in some when I was, I, the way I test these guns is I don't just shoot them you know, like this. To test to see if the gun's going to lock back reliably, I'm holding it out here like this, right? So that the gun can move around. Uh, and when I was shooting, holding this as light as possible, uh, I saw that in position four, uh, the gun was not reliably locking back. So when I went up to position five, okay, I could hold the gun in this goofy position like this, shoot this boom, 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 and I could see that it would lock back like 100% of the time. So that's how I tuned the gun to make sure that I'm in a gas position that is going to work under all circumstances. So you need that flexibility. So I'm not telling you guys specifically to go buy a Palmetto, okay? This, this is the, the PA-10 Gen 3. I'm telling you guys that, you know, that this is the thing you gotta look for. You have to make sure that the AR-10 has a highly adjustable gas system. Uh, and if you get one that doesn't, like let's say you buy the Bear Creek one, for example, which doesn't, 
you should consider as part of your purchasing costs uh, upgrading that, okay? Uh, you should consider upgrading it because you'll be able to fine tune the gun and make it work with all sorts of 308 ammunition, okay? So uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like I said, I've, I've discussed all these points in different videos, but I, I, I thought that it kind of deserved to be like a headline item, okay? So now one of the things I've said before, uh, you know, your AR-10 should definitely not be your first gun, okay? What you should have, like first you should have at least like four, maybe five AR-15s, right? Different barrel lengths, okay? Uh, four, like four or five AR-15s, get yourself like four or five AR-9s. AR-9s are great because it's cheap ammunition. You can shoot them on these steel targets up close, okay? You get like four or five Glocks, okay? Uh, make sure they all got optics, optics, and anything without optics is an antique at this point. And at that point, right, once you're up to about, I don't know, about 12 guns or so uh, in your safe, at that point, I think you're at the point where you can consider an AR-10, right? Anytime you're buying a new gun, uh, also factor in buying 2,000 rounds of ammunition just for that gun. It doesn't matter if you've got, if you already got it from another caliber. The, the point is, this is kind of like a test to test your commitment, your commitment to shooting this gun, right? Because anytime I buy another gun, right, my intention is not to shoot the other guns that I already have less. Uh, my intention is to do more overall shooting, okay? So the way I'm, I test my commitment to training with the gun is not just buying the gun, not just buying the, the optic, but buying an additional 2,000 2, rounds of ammunition just for that new gun okay so my thoughts on that uh, drop some comments below let me know what you guys think check the description because youtube's always unsubscribing people and i'll talk to you all soon